When I was a boy, I never knew any child my age to be more cruel, more twisted than my sister. Rune Zevitz was infamous for harboring an unbridled disregard for authority of any kind. She was unrestrained, uncontrollable, and downright demented. Everyone knew that there was no disciplining her, because Rune thrived on making everyone miserable. In fact, she derived pleasure from the antagonism directed toward her, and every time someone gave her a dirty look, Rune would smile her psychotic little head off. But what she loved to do the most in order to make the biggest impact possible was inflict physical harm onto others. Why was she the source of everyone's misery? Why did she enjoy being the outcast? Whatever the reason, the result would always leave her with a profound sense of accomplishment. To me, Rune Zevitz was nothing short of a monster. I remember there was one day, I saw Rune in the grand hall of our residence and noticed that her right eye was swollen shut. Concerned about Rune's swollen eye, our frail yet devoted mother felt compelled to take her to a clinic near the outskirts of Cadia to have it treated, aggravating the existing strain on her fragile body. Rune, mother's waiting for you. Let's go already. No. I'll give you my share of pudding tonight, so could you please be good and listen to me just for today? I don't like pudding. Go away. Doesn't... doesn't your eye hurt, Rune? If you don't get it treated now, you might go blind in one eye. Do you want to see out of only one eye? I don't care. I think I want to go blind in one eye. What is the matter with you, Rune? Blindness is... Rune! Runo! Are you both ready now? Rune, Mom's actually feeling healthy enough to get out of bed today. Please, just be good for her. You know what, Runo? I don't give a damn. And you know what else? I hope Mommy dies. I hope Daddy dies, too. I hope that stupid clinic burns to the ground. But most of all, I hope you die, Rudo. I hope everybody in the world just keels over. You don't mean that. Don't say anything you don't really mean. It's depressing. In reality, I didn't find half of what she said too depressing. I hope you die, Rudo. I couldn't keep track of how many times she said that to me. Rune never really cared much about anything unless it served some purpose to satiate her twisted persona. For example, Rune had a fairly limited vocabulary, but she knew more words associated with morbid topics. Rune. I don't care if you say those nasty things to me, but please don't ever utter those words in front of our mother. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. In hindsight, I should have known that my pleas would have the opposite effect on my wicked sister. If only I had known she was a simpleton. Could have worked wonders on Rune with reverse psychology. If I had encouraged her in a roundabout way to do something that appeased her evil ego, she would have listened to me. Whether she would have taken my encouragement seriously is now a redundant matter, but I suspect she would have taken abnormal delight in the idea. I could never properly communicate with Rune, not with words at least. Her brand of communication was always performed through physical contact. Rune, you haven't changed yet! Hurry and get ready! I'm sorry, Mother, I tried to tell her, but Rune's being really stubborn. Don't be sorry, Rudo, you only did what you thought was right. Come on, sweetie, let's go to the doctor and see what he can do about your swollen eye. No. Rune, your eye won't get any better if we don't go now. It shouldn't take too long, either. Doctors are a lot better now than they used to be, at least when I was a girl. No. Our mother's words were always final, and whenever Rune realized she couldn't bring our mother down to her level... I don't want to go! Rune would take all civility out of the conversation, recede to the mentality of a toddler, and whine and whine... It was a painful sight to see every single time. Her ear-splitting shrieks would reverberate without end until her vocal cords were worn to the point of exhaustion. Ugh! Please, Rune, be a good girl and listen to Mommy. If you're a good girl, Mommy will take you to the ice cream parlor in the Central District after your appointment at the clinic. I don't want to go! No matter how hard my mother tried to reason with her, Rune just wouldn't listen. Ultimately, we had to drag her onto the carriage, kicking and screaming all the way to the clinic. Thirty minutes passed, and Rune finally stopped subjecting her vocal cords to her endless shrieks. But her tantrum was far from over. During the entirety of her examination, Rune continually lunged and snapped at her attending physician. The unfortunate physician endured Rune's behavior in silence far better than most people would. But I could tell by the look in his eyes, he had had enough of her nonsense. If he weren't a Zevitz employee, I'm certain he would have thrown us out as soon as he concluded Rune's examination. He dressed her swollen eye with a white eye patch and said nothing else.
We stopped by the central district, just as my mother said that we would, and Rune sprinted off into the distance. Goodness, whatever am I going to do with Rune? Mother, I'll go and try to calm her down. If I can get her to calm down, she might tell us what's bothering her. I'm sure she will. I suppose I still have a thing or two that I can learn from my own children. I'm surprised you can keep up with her, Rudo. I... I don't know what I'd do with Rune if it weren't there watching out for her, Rudo. I can't keep up with that bundle of energy, not anymore. I'm sure she has a good reason. I wanted so badly to believe that there was a method to her madness. Maybe when Rune grows up a little, she'll start to calm down even more. To this day, I still can't fathom how I would have had the misfortune of being the model sibling to that wild child. This... it's just a phase. We just have to tough it out. Once Rune grows older, she'll come to her senses. She has to. But until then, I'll keep an eye on her. Don't worry about her mother. Bobby! Rune returned to the carriage with a thick branch in her hand. Rune, put that stick down. You could hurt yourself or someone else. <laughs> Can I? Can I really hurt somebody else? <laughs> Rune thrust the stick into the pavement and ran in circles around the carriage before taking off once more, kicking up dirt and dust in the process. <laughs> Goodness gracious! We can't let her run free with that, it's dangerous! I'll go, Mother. You stay here and rest, and I'll go after her. No, no, I'm coming with you. For once in my life, I need to do the hard deed of... scolding my child. If only that could have prevented what came next. <laughs> oh man, is this when she- Oh my god, this is when she put the stick in that kid's eyeball. It took me some time before I realized what that sound really was. It was an adolescent boy who let out a wholeheartedly justified, blood-curdling scream. <laughs> Where did that come from? I found a boy being pinned to the ground with the hand of his assailant clenched tight around his collar. The assailant was my psychotic little sister who appeared to be overcome with euphoria as she stabbed the sharp end of the stick into her victim's face several times. What? The ground was stained with the boy's blood. The impact of the unbelievable scene forced my mind into shock. With each and every downward thrust Rune took with the stick, the area around them became more saturated with blood. Who looks funny now, huh? <laughs> uh. The child wasn't even flinching as the branch carved into his skull. He was clearly unconscious. Rune! That's not the answer I wanted to hear! Rune's voice rendered into raspy, ear-splitting tills after screaming her head off. Didn't resemble that of a young girl. Die! 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 <laughs> it sounded like that of a monster. <laughs> The only thing I could recall after hearing her twisted tune was my body lurching forward. When I came to, my clothes were drenched and dyed with various shades of crimson blood. Just by the evidence at the time, I could conclude that I separated Rune from her victim. But how I managed to do that remains unclear even to this day. The boy was immediately taken to one of our branch hospitals for emergency care. The boy's name was Marcus Gakuilis, age 8. The team of surgeons worked for hours, stabilizing Marcus removing hundreds of splinters from his face and disinfecting his left eye socket. They were able to save his life, but they couldn't save his left eye. What's worse, one of Rune's thrusts into his left eye socket impacted the sphenoid bone near his left temple. It would end up being the cause of permanent damage to his body's purified mana production and regulation. Rune's rampage left Marcus to suffer recurring cluster headaches for the remainder of his life. And he'll learn that if he ever wakes up again. Rune blamed Marcus for what happened, asserting that he started it with an offhanded comment. You look funny. Rune was six years old when she made her first attempt at committing murder. The surgeons who performed on Marcus were mystified by a number of details of the incident, more so than outraged. Even though Marcus was much bigger than Rune, she easily overtook him. Marcus's eye proved resilient by withstanding numerous sharp stabs from Rune's stick. They came to a collective conclusion that the nature of the incident was highly peculiar. Apparently, the thought of a younger child, a girl no less, overpowering an older boy and inflicting severe injuries onto him with only a stick in hand was seen as highly unusual. In order to perform such a feat, there had to have been an element of surprise. What a terrible and unfortunate accident. 
The doctors all said that. No, there was no way this was some sort of freak accident. This wasn't just some incident where a small girl lashed out in anger. Rune must have had clear intentions of destruction. This little incident was just an excuse to exercise that malicious intent. Afterwards, my mother, who had barely been able to contain her emotions, did the difficult deed and gave Rune the scolding of her life. It was the first scolding Rune had ever received from our mother. She cried her eyes out while apologizing to everyone in the room. The peacekeepers of Cadia issued my parents an edict of Rune's punishment for attempting murder. Indefinite residential confinement. Essentially, house arrest. For a short period of time, Rune didn't speak a single word. Not to herself, not to anyone. For my parents, however, the matter of liability for their daughter's crime fell unto them. We were open to do everything in our power to make things right for the son of the Gurkuyi's family. Starting with complimentary coverage for Marcus at our largest hospital, where he received the best and most advanced treatments that were available. The monetary value of every treatment he underwent was of little concern. We waived everything. We even extended Marcus's care to cover his education, which also went towards supporting his whole family, who were experiencing financial straits. We looked past the astronomical loss of Gallos to a single family just to right the wrongs of deranged little Rune. In fact, when we extended our generous offer to the Gurkui's family, the mother wanted nothing from us, not even monetary aid from my parents. But it wasn't long until her declination of our offer caused internal strife within his family. His wife, discontent with her husband's greed for desiring our offer, divorced him and departed Cadia, citing irreconcilable idiocy. A day passed since the incident, which soon turned into a week, a month, a year, and yet, time ceased to salvage the broken Gurkui's family. On the other hand, my family's long conglomerate chain continued to grow and flourish one link at a time. The damage that Rune had done to our family and the companies left a stigma, but the wounds of her wayward actions dissipated with time. Contrary to my personal belief at the time, Rune had managed to reach the conclusion that hurting people was bad. Something inside her head clicked, compelling her to broaden her vocabulary from her personal compendium of pain and death. It's almost as if she underwent some sort of metamorphosis from the time she spent under house arrest, entering her chrysalis of silence and emerging as a normal human. No longer was Rune the anthropic menace that I had always known her to be, but was a normal child with non-violent tendencies toward other people. Obviously, given my history with her to date, I had doubts about what I saw and heard with my own eyes. In fact, I had nothing but doubts concerning the fantastic idea of Rune's evolution from a little monster into the little sister I never had. But as time passed, I came to accept that Rune truly had changed. Five years have passed since Rune blinded poor Marcus Gurkuis, and not a day goes by that I don't think about what would have happened if I hadn't stopped her then. Mother, where is father? Oh, he should be home soon. You should tidy yourself up before he returns. It's not every day we can all go out to eat dinner as a family. There was a distinctly melodic quality about my mother's usually gentle voice. Mother, it's only Ivel's Tavern. I don't think people there will care if there are a few creases on my dress shirt or not. Now who said it was okay for you to dress sloppy when you're out and about on the town? Especially in the eye of the public. I certainly didn't, so go tidy up. Rune, are you all dressed yet? Yes, mother. Oh, my goodness, brother. Your dress shirt has so many creases. You should wear something with wrinkle-free fabric. Yes, mother and I were just speaking about that. For shame, brother. Would you like me to help you? Help me with what, exactly? We'll help you with picking out a wrinkle-free dress shirt. That won't be necessary, actually. <laughs> it's so adorable. Rudo, why don't you let Rune help you pick something out? Come on, brother. Let's go to your room. I have a better idea. You stay here, and I'll go pick out my own wrinkle-free shirt. Father will be home soon, and having you go through my closet will only delay our departure. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, if it ain't my two favorite runts, Daddy's home, kids. Welcome home, Father. Hello, Father. Welcome home. Why, hello to you too, Rudo and Rune. Why are you dressed so nice, Rune? Uh, Father, it's because we're going out tonight. It's a special occasion. Mother did say we're having dinner as a family. Special, special. We're just going out to eat. And to a tavern, no less. I tried arguing that point as well, but... 
Sid, where is your necktie? Uh, uh honey, well, I, uh, I took it off because I just got home, of course. It's no big deal. You are the CEO of Zevitz Enterprise, darling. If you go out looking like a slob, people will treat you like a slob. That goes for business meetings as well. Now hurry and put your necktie back on and let's get going to Ivel's Tavern. We're going to have a nice family dinner and we will not be coming back until later tonight. Mother lectured our father for his perceived slobbishness as she stormed up the stairs to the second floor. Oh, I know it's been a while since I've been home, kids, but I forget how feisty your mother can be. Maybe it's because it's been a while since you last came home. Awkward pause. We've got an important announcement to make. <laughs> what? Oh, goodness gracious. I can't remember the last time you both looked so happy. It's like really weird. That's funny you should say that, oh daughter of mine. We just signed your life away. Wh what? You signed my life away? You bet we did, and golly, you're gonna love being a slave to society. Ah! Stop trying to scare our daughter, darling. Ow, stop squeezing my cheeks. Rune, you've been enrolled into Kadia Academy for the Gifted. You're gonna be going to school starting next week. Oh. She, she got in? Well, that's amazing. Congratulations, Rune. You made it, mother, father? We swear it, cross our hearts, and hope to die. You can even stick needles in our eyes. Please don't ever use that idiom again, mother. I can go to school starting next week with, with other children my age? You really impressed the administrators at your meeting with them last week. The principal says you'd be a great candidate for their prestigious academy. I... I don't know what to say. I... I could really go to school? It's a dream come true. I'm really happy for you, Rune. I hope you make lots and lots of friends there. Sid Zevitz, you son of a bitch! How's it hanging? Hurtsy, you old bastard. Why don't you give a guy a heads up, huh? Ah, oh, you could say the same to you, you senile old coot. What you doing, eating dinner without an ounce of ale to wash it all down? Let's head to the bar. Hold it, Hertzy. Now you know how I feel about Sid and ale. He's a featherweight. He can't hold an ounce of ale. You know that. Oh, God. Is this accident gonna happen because he drank and then dr- Is this gonna be a drinking and driving scenario because- Oh, God. He's got to build up a tolerance somehow, right? Like he built up all them muscles and that big brain of his. Besides, I haven't seen his ugly mug for a good while. Oh, well, who might these tykes be? Good evening. Good evening, Uncle Hertzman. If I remember right, it's Rudo and... Rune! I don't believe my eyes, Sid. They're even bigger than the last time I saw him. Time sure does wonder to youngsters. Rudo, come here for a second. Don't be shy. Uh, yeah? For the love of mana, Sid, your boy's sprouting like a tree. Whatever the boy's eating, it's all going to his height. He'll be taller than you soon. All right already, Hertz. You don't get my son caught up in our antics now. Now it's the same rules as usual, right? Hey, look over there. Hertzman's gonna play a wee game of Speed Ale with Zevitz as CEO. Oh, you're out of your mind. The CEO of Zevitz Enterprise wouldn't grace Ivel's bosom. She's too filthy from our affections to court the likes of the rich. I implore you to take a gander over there, you blind bastard! Oh, for the love of mana, it really is him. Bless Ivel's bosom. I'll have you boys know I'm not above coming to Ivel's tavern. Every day is a good day when you eat at Ivel's. I might be filthy rich, but I'm as filthy as the rest of you. I'm gonna best the king of Ivel's tonight. Get, uh, get your get, get your get your gut ready, Hertzy. Your throne's gonna be mine after tonight. Here, here! Hail the future king of Ivels! Oh, here we go again. We couldn't just for once have a nice normal meal as a family. No. Oh, don't fret your heart out too much, Eileen. I'll send Sid back soon. I haven't seen this beautiful bastard's mug in a long time. Sweet Ellie, won't you please just enjoy our youth for old times' sake? Oh, well, I suppose so. But you better down that ale faster than Hertzy does, Sid. I don't care how smashed you get either. Make Hertzy regret interrupting our dinner. M mother. You got it, honey. Don't forget to work the crowd. Get them on our side. 
Hear me, hear me, patrons of Ivals. If my husband can beat Hertz von Gerkuis in a game of speed ale, we're buying a round for everyone here. Almighty Nectar of Ivol, you heard the lady stop Hertzy from drinking the ale. Oh, that's not fair. I can barely afford my own drink, Ellie. Rigged, I say. The game is rigged. Give me back that ale. Ugh. <laughs> Much to my own surprise, you seem to be enjoying yourself, Bob. <sighs> Mother, is something wrong? Oh, it's nothing, Rudo. I just can't help but feel some relief. Time really does wonders. With time, we learn to forgive and forget and all the pain we cause each other. Time gives us a second chance to move past the mistakes that were made and move on with our lives. To be honest with you both, I was relieved that Hertzvon came to us tonight. There was a time when I thought, well, that we lost Hertzvon as our good friend. Mother, I apologize for my actions. No matter how young I was, there's, there's no excuse for bringing shame and disgrace to our family name. If it wasn't for my actions, there might never have been any issues with the Kukui's family. You don't have to apologize, Rune. It is all in the past now. The only things I care about are you two. I only want the best for you, and your happiness means the world to me. Mother... You two will understand one day, when you're both grown up, leading your father's company with your own families. You'll know why I feel how I do. But you both need to first accumulate, absorb, and retain everything you learn. And most importantly, keep your eyes on the prize. Do you understand me? Y yes mother. Wait a minute! Little Rune, you're going off to Katia's Academy for the Gifted? Good for you! I never went to no fancy schmancy school like that and I turned out just fine. The administrators didn't want me oh how and I don't need them anyways. I hear you, Hertzy. Did you hear that, Rune? Neither Uncle Hertz Von or myself went to school and we both turned out just fine. Don't listen to your father. He's had too much to drink. Right, darling? Ow, ow! Uh, well, stop squeezing my cheekies. I, uh, man, you're turning into Hertz Von. Maybe that's canon. It's canon now. That's his normal accent, but then he changed it because, you know, he was the CEO and they wanted him to sound, you know, a bit more formal. But when he drinks, he, he, he gets his old accent back. That's, there we go. I was joking. <laughs> Listen, Rune. Your father, Uncle Albus, and Uncle Hertz Von all didn't go to school to get a formal education. But against all odds, they became huge successes in their own way. Not everyone can do that, though. Even though your father may start acting strange when the subject of education is brought up, he's an advocate for compulsory education. Why, before your father made his fortune in dabbling in mana mines, education was always reserved for Cadia's most privileged families. But that all changed years ago after your father persuaded the Cadian government to create a compulsory education system for the entire Outer Pole. Compulsory education? It's the education that all children are required to receive no matter their social status. It's a way of empowering the future generation, really. Empowering the future generation? That's right, Rudo. So don't you two ever forget that either. The people of the Outer Pole here cannot use Minecraft to survive, unlike other places out in the world. Education is the only pathway we have towards survival. That's why you both need to immerse yourselves in education, study hard, and flourish in order to survive. Oh, what nonsense are you spouting, Ellie? We're surviving without our stinking education just fine. Hertzy? A person's worth ain't determined by the things they learn in some dusty old school. It's determined by your life's experiences and how much they've grown as a person. Hell yeah, Hertzy, for a drunken slob, you have some good things to say. Goodness gracious, the both of you drunkards. Stop trying to poison the minds of my dear children with your rogue ways. Rune, no matter what they say tonight, you're starting at the Academy next week. <laughs> Understood, Mother Dearest. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Sid. Oh, you brought Rudo with you. Hello, Uncle Albus. Sorry, Albus, forgot to grab some papers on the way out earlier. No, by all means. Actually, you came at the perfect time. Rudo, could you excuse us both for a little while? Your father and I need to discuss something. Uh, okay. Do you need something to kill time with, son? No, I had something I wanted to finish up earlier, so... Gotcha. I'll 
Be back shortly, father. Albus, uh, what's going on? What's with that headmaster's mug you're wearing, huh? At least I'm not the one who looked like they had one too many drinks. Did you get smashed yesterday evening? You bet I did. Had some fun with Hertzie and the family at Ivel's last night. Remember how I told you that Rune was accepted into Cadia's Academy for the Gifted? I figure, you know, she should be safe to be around other kids by now, right? It's been five years already. I assume you broke the news to her then. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, Albus. Never seen her so bright and bubbly before. So much life in her eyes, in everyone's eyes, in fact. You should have been there, Albus. There was life, was there? Okay, Albie, now you're ruining my mood with that grim mug you're making and the cryptic crap. What's going on? We have an issue on our hands, Sid. Here's the most recent cross-section image of Rune's cerebral cortex from the Mana Resonance Imaging. MRI! Ah, stop! Take a good look. Huh? It's divided into parts which correspond to specific emotions within her brain. I want you to focus your attention on the areas that pertain to emotions such as happiness, anger, sadness, and shock. This image? Was it mucked up during the scan, was it? Unfortunately, it was not. I was quite shocked myself, but this is the reality of the situation, Sid. With this image captured, our rune's depth range in variety of emotions. <laughs> you lost me this time, Albie, because I don't see anything you just described in this image. I see no depth, no range, no variety, nothing. It's just the default template for all MRIs, right? Did you not trigger the machine when you scanned it? Sid, try and compose yourself. I'll get to the point. Your daughter's range of emotions is non-existent. Huh? Unlike you, your son, and myself, Rune's brain lacks a part of the limbic system that is essential for the regulation of emotions. It's a rare, congenital disorder that she's always had, but that we only recently discovered. Albus. That- that's not possible. Sid. She was laughing. She was smiling at everything. I watched her sulk about the house when Rudo didn't play with her one day. Are you trying to tell me all those emotions were fictive? I cannot say, Sid. Without evidence of emotional expression, my theory unfortunately still stands. It's just one image. It will never be enough to convince me my daughter is devoid of all emotion. The evidence stands, Sid. I wouldn't have brought it to your attention unless I believed that it was something you needed to know. And what did I need to know, Albus? That Rune's a living doll? Do I need to start doubting if my own daughter is even human? Sid. Isn't that what you're arguing? Just because she's devoid of emotions doesn't make her any less of a human? It's our heart that makes us who we are. Think for one second and get a hold of yourself, Sid. No, Albus. Not my daughter. Not Rune. There's gotta be some mistake. The MRI isn't entirely reliable yet. You can't just base your whole assertion for doubting my daughter's humanity on a prototype. It is your invention, Sid, and the margin of error for your invention is non-existent. You personally calibrated it to show anything and everything. There's no room for error. Out of all the inventions that helped in the advancement of the medical field, your MRI has given birth to the most successful treatments known to the Outer Pole. I'm not listening to you, Albus. My daughter has emotions, damn it. This is all just one horrible mistake. Even the incident with the Gurkuis five years ago, it's, it's not Rune's fault. Rune has no emotions? R Rudo. Months passed after Albus's revelation to my father. Contrary to our then common fear, Rune had managed to mix and mingle without any issue at Cadia's Academy for the Gifted. Albus's assertions bore no fruit as time passed and our lives went by without any incident. As time passed, even the unfortunate incident with Marcus Grakuis five years prior faded from the memory of the public. Rune spent five years under house arrest and was primarily homeschooled until my parents appealed. Ultimately, Rune's lack of exposure to the public had effectively erased the existence of Sid Zevitz's only daughter. The Academy informed us of Rune's progress and that her well-mannered demeanor helped make her approachable to students. She made many friends there. Rune also had little issue learning all the material offered at the academy. Clearly, the professional teacher that father hired during her five years of confinement had paid off. And with all this news in mind, Albus's diagnosis of Rune's lack of emotions became a moot point. And life went on. 
But one day, life decided to cease its relentless advance to remind me of the truth. I recall that I was returning home from another day at Cadia's Academy for the Gifted when I decided to stop by a park that wasn't frequented often by most people. I thought I'd take a stroll through the thickets and bushes to unwind a little, but after clearing the first few rows of thickets, I saw that Rune was there too. I crept near to her, wondering what she was doing in the park all alone when there was practically nobody else around. I was wrong. <laughs> Rune! As I crept closer, nature's tranquility was suddenly shattered from the deafening cry of an animal- oh god. I hadn't the faintest idea of what animal made such an agonizing sound, but I could tell something was wrong when no other sound followed. Rune. No, please, no. I rose from the underbrush and strode toward the young tree that Rune sat under. Rune! Hello, brother. What brings you so far out here? Oh, God. Were you looking for me? It's quite ill-mannered of you to sneak up on me unannounced. What are you doing, Rune? What are those scissors for? Why are they stained ruby red? <laughs> well, obviously, it's because there's blood on them. As for what I'm doing out here, brother, well, that's really none of your concern. Or are you just being nosy for no reason, Rudo? The tone of her voice suddenly deepened. I... I'm gonna ask you again, Rune. What are you doing here, and what did you do to that animal? No. No, I don't believe it. Rune! I almost forgot how clever she could be. All those horrible things she did five years ago, and nobody even noticed a thing until she stabbed them in the eye. It's all been an act. What? What is wrong with you? Wrong? Nothing is wrong with me, Rudo. Unless you consider the fact that I'm devoid of all emotion, then you could just consider me inhuman. She... she knew. That theory was only known between Father Albus and myself, so how did she find out? When did she find out? <laughs> you don't have to thank me, Rudo. It's the least I could do now that you know about my extracurricular activity. Allow me to elaborate how I came to this conclusion, my dear oblivious big brother. Nothing evokes any emotion for me. I can feel nothing for any of you. I feel like a blank canvas every waking moment of my life until I've personally brushed it with the pain of the living, stained it with the purest blood of the heart, and captured the very essence of sweet, euphoric death. Do you understand, Rudo? All the pleasant memories I've experienced with our family mean absolutely nothing to me. Natural or not, observing death's work is the only pleasure I derive from life. If I had only known that day, Oh, Rudo, if only you understood the beauty behind the sweet sound of a death rattle and the spastic contractions of rigor mortis. If only you knew how fulfilled they make me feel. That through her macabre musings, the gaze in her eyes would be the harbinger of future misfortunes. So much life endures, and yet, all life is just so fragile and easy to end. I came to the conclusion that something, anything, had to be done about Rune. I spoke to my parents about my findings, but they ignored me, seeking to be oblivious to the danger that was their daughter. I needed concrete evidence that the past six years were all a sham, an illusion that Rune created to lull my parents into a false sense of security, but it was in vain. Rudo, how could you say that about your own sister? I don't know what happened between you two today, but please try and get along with her. You're her only brother in the whole world. My mother appealed to my diminishing attachment to my murderous little sister. I was living with paranoia every waking moment of my life. I wasn't wrong to suspect Rune after the eye gouging incident. Now I couldn't take my eyes off her for even a moment. Unlike poor Marcus Gracuis, which in hindsight was a completely unforeseen and spur of the moment incident, Rune has matured by six dangerous years. I needed to counter her with whatever I could. I convinced myself she was scheming something with every fiber of her being. I wasn't living for myself anymore. I was living to prevent Rune from committing murder. For a while I observed and watched each and every one of her actions, following her daily itinerary to a T. 
I even ventured to ask the local peacekeepers for reports of any peculiar incidences, particularly ones involving dead animals. What they revealed left me flabbergasted. Dead animals? That ain't news to our ears anymore, son. It was something that had been happening over the past few years. Numerous reports regarding the discovery of grisly animal remains. The sites of discovery always featured dismembered limbs, tails, heads, the whole nine yards. The peacekeepers didn't have a suspect, but they knew that only a person could have done the deed. They could never catch anyone in the act. The reports only continued to increase. I was instructed to report anything out of place or unusual. I was at a loss as to what to do. Should I confess that my sister was behind it all? Right now, in the spur of the moment, without a single shred of evidence to support my allegations, my claims held no water without any physical evidence or third-party corroboration. Even if I had anything to work with, the thought of my mother's tear-streaked face made me hesitant to press the matter with the peacekeepers. I had to stop my sister before her murderous spree of animals escalated to include humans. I didn't want our mother to suffer any more pain because of my twisted sister's actions. From that day onward, I became the deterrence to Rune's devotion to death. My eyes never failed to track her movements. Wherever she went, whatever she did, my eyes would always follow. <laughs> I notice you've been paying extra special attention to me recently, brother. What a shame. Every breath she took, every word she uttered, everything she did only served to fuel my suspicions. From the day since she blinded Marcus Gracuis, Rune had been diligently working to earn back the trust of the people who cared about her, even going as far as developing a facade for the sake of appearing reformed. How blind we all were. Brother, I think it's time I conclude this little game of ours. Blinded, but I... Blinded by our desire to love Rune. Several weeks later, my mother had a medical emergency. She had drunk tea which was laced with traces of a drug called Process 1, or P1 for short has powerful mana immunity boosting properties. However, there was a concentrated amount that was found in the tea, enough to kill a grown adult. Miraculously though, my mother's natural purified mana immunity had somehow forced her to regurgitate her drink. She soon collapsed afterwards, but the drug never made it beyond her esophagus. Given the suspicious nature of my mother's poisoning, the peacekeepers were obliged to conduct a thorough investigation. Rune vanished from our residence not long after. Several days after she disappeared, the peacekeepers discovered an emptied Zevitz pharmacy labeled Vile in Rune's room, and concluded that she'd been smuggling P1 from the local pharmacy. According to forensic reports, Rune had enough P1 to kill around 10 adults. Days after the peacekeepers' discovery of the vials of P1, several Zevitz Enterprises executives and business people from the Outer Pole, who were considered highly valued clients, were reported to have died from P1 poisoning. Upon learning of their compatriot's death, the client's company, based on the second sector of the Outer Pole, called for a cessation to talk between themselves and Zevitz Enterprise. This was a severe setback for my father, who devoted four years to planning an expansion to the second sector. Finally, the very next day, following the mass poisoning, a cargo ship pulled into a seaport near Cadia and unloaded the body of my little sister. We had an autopsy conducted the same day and discovered overwhelming amounts of colored mana which had oversaturated and overtaken her body's purified mana production capabilities. The official cause of death was ruled as mana shock. Our inherent mana deficiency leads our bodies to treat natural mana as poison. Thus, any attempt to leave the outer pole for a locale rich with mana will result in a slow, agonizing death. Even Rune would know this, which led me to believe that she couldn't have attempted to leave the continent willingly. The peacekeepers had little to go on for where Rune was found at sea, the events leading up to her death, everything. They closed the matter and it's remained unsolved to this day. What was my little sister trying to do? Was someone out to kill her? At the time, all I had were questions with nobody around to answer them, until I observed the fallout of Rune's death. Upon learning of her daughter's death, my mother's indomitable spirit finally broke and she sank into a deep depression. She refused to eat anything, and nine months later, my fragile mother, Eileen Zevitz, passed away. Since Rune's death, my father had confined himself to his personal laboratory in Zevitz Enterprise corporate building. My family as I knew it, 
had been destroyed. No, my family was destined for self-destruction. From the moment that Rune was born into this world, I finally realized the truth. Ever since Rune assaulted Marcus Gurkuis, she had been biding her time and blinding us to her ultimate act of destruction. Rune Zevitz, the stigma of the Zevitz family, wove a beautifully deceptive web of affections and promises for six years, and swatted it all away in one fell swoop, revealing the truth in all of its terrific splendor. In order to thoroughly and effectively destroy the family that loved their wild child daughter despite all her shortcomings, Rune Zevitz committed suicide. Why couldn't she accomplish the exact same task without killing herself? Because Rune Zevitz was death incarnate and my dearly departed little sister. Thank you so much for watching a very eye-opening episode of Fault Milestone 1. If you would like to watch this series from the beginning, you can see the playlist on my channel, youtube.com slash to continue. I would love it if you would subscribe, and also, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Have a great day!